All right, Lair Lair, I got an eight minute uh, video that I'm gonna walk through. It's uh, how to design this cube inside of Fusion 360. Let's jump right into it. So inside of Fusion 360, I put together this, this cube. And uh, before I started making uh, anything, I kind of prototyped sort of playing with the, with the cube to see what kind of, um, what kind of design methods are, are gonna be needed to make this shape. So I started off by um, just adding a chamfer on all the edges to see how that would behave. Um, so throwing a chamfer on all the edges of the cube gives you a triangle for all the corners, which is pretty close to what we want. We wanted that hexagon shape. So to do the hexagon shape, if you apply a chamfer to just four of the edges, you end up with um, a bit of an octagon, right? So with that octagon, if you chamfer those front faces, then you kind of get the effect that I'm going for, but you can't really kind of apply that to every one of the faces. So I had to construct it kind of face by face and not just like one cube and then throw a giant uh, chamfer on it. So uh, that shows a little bit of the, the face. It doesn't give me those corners. So getting that, those uh, hexagon corners was the, the challenge. So delete that and start with a sketch driven um, box. But uh, before that, let's go ahead and create some user parameters to make this a user uh, a parametric design. So I created a, a parameter called box, which has 50 millimeter as the value. Uh, using a center base rectangle, I'll sketch a rectangle into the center grid and then just give it box box for the X and the Y. And then I can create another user parameter. We'll call this one corner. And I'll make it eight millimeters. This is going to be um, sort of the, the size of the corner. So I create a, a diagonal line and it's perpendicular with the, the line that we sketched on top of, so it has a constraint. So now it has a nice 45 degree angle uh, perpendicular with, uh, with the first sketch. And then I can apply a sketch dimension using that corner, use a parameter, so that it is a parametric value that we can update in that little spreadsheet. Um, and then I apply a circular pattern to that diagonal line. So I create a, co a copy of four of them on each corner, and then I can extrude the profile add a 45 degree chamfer or, or dra uh, tamper, tapered angle and then you can get this, this kind of shape that flares out. So I have uh, the bottom constructed and then I can create another side profile which will be uh, created with an offset plane using the user parameters. We'll say box divided by two plus corner and that'll give me uh, an offset plane where it's uh, perfectly lined up with uh, the face of that cube, or what will be the cube. So we basically make the same kind of rectangle that is a center-based rectangle. We give it the same uh, user parameters, which is box, and then we're gonna use some, some sketch constraints uh, to lock this into place. So I'll use a midpoint constraint and a line, and then I'll turn it into a construction line so that I can um, so that it won't uh, intersect with our profile. Apply that corner, um, use a parameter, and then I'll extrude it out. I'll use a uh, user parameter corner divided by two. I'll give it a flare of 45 degrees. And I actually forgot to add the diagonal line, so I gotta go back in that sketch and add that diagonal line. Using the same method, I'll do the, uh, the center. Is it center? No, it's a, it's a circular pattern. So although it creates a cube, I just need to create that diagonal corner line. So I can really quick sketch that out, apply a, uh, a sketch dimension, give it that corner, um, user parameter, and then just do a circular pattern. Make sure the quantity is four, click on that center, and I can create a pretty quick um, update to this, uh, this profile. So I just deselect those corners, and now I have my octagon. There we go. Now what I'll do is I'll, all I gotta do is a circular pattern that, um, that one panel using the, the, the Z axis to repeat that as a circle. Update the quantity to four so I get all four sides. And then um, I'll create another offset plane using my, uh, my box user parameter and my corner user parameter. I can do divided by two plus corner divided by two and that'll give me half of the, uh, of the box because I have to add that corner in there. 
Um, but after that, I can use that as a, as a plane to do a mirror command. I just mirror that bottom plane to make a top facing plane. Now I have uh, my, my individual panels. So all that's left to do is to kind of uh, merge them. But you can, uh, you can merge them uh, using a loft command. What I'm doing right here is I'm just uh, doing a section analysis. I can cut through and do a cross section. Of, of the model and see that it is indeed hollow because we just created the, the faces. We didn't, we didn't um, fill it in yet. So I'll use a loft and I'll select the bottom floor and the top floor and that'll kind of merge all of the uh, individual shapes into one body. However, if we do a, 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 a section now, so you see that my corners need to be uh, filleted, uh, need to be lofted. And then I can apply a, uh, a pattern type, feature pattern type and then um, do a circular pattern on that so that all the corners get filled in. Look at that. So now we have a pretty solid, but our corners need to be cleaned up a little bit. So I'll sketch right on top of one of the corners, which is this triangle. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll grab the line tool and then I'll connect these, these, these vertices, these little corners to create a hexagon. So when I create this hexagon, it'll uh, close the profile and then I can select that as a, uh, as a profile. See so it's selected and I can uh, hit the extrude command. I'll do uh, extent to object and then select that triangle and then I'll just create this nice clean cut on that corner. I'll hit OK to accept that. And then what I'll do is I'll do another circular pattern this time I'll select the pattern type to faces, select that face, and then just apply um, four, uh, four quantities uh, to that. And then I can just mirror those four faces to the bottom using, um, using that construction plane that we've, we built earlier. And that's pretty much it. It's a really, um, really different way to create a sort of a cube like this, but it has those, those really nice uh, chamfered edges and then hexagon. Um, corners. I don't, know, I don't know what the name of the cube is, but uh, once you have the shape, you can pretty much do anything to it. You can apply a shell. Uh, maybe you want to make a pencil holder or a planter out of this. You have complete control over all the parameters. It is parametric, so it can scale up and down. Um, and uh, that's pretty much how I created this cube. You can also, the, this shell feature is really powerful in Fusion as you can apply a shell to the whole cube and then have this frame. That's pretty much how I created the frame uh, and then just creating panels around it. Uh, but again, it's fully user parametric so I can apply uh, a bigger size to it and everything just flows with it since we, we constrained it pretty good. Um, corners can be updated as well. And because we used a little bit of math in there, um, the corner will always stay, the lengths uh, of, each, of each edge will always stay consistent. Uh, and then, um, the original source, CAD source that I have as a download, contains uh, this nice assembly animation. So if anybody's curious on how to create animations, you can pick apart the animation and see how that was, was put together. Um, that's pretty much it. That's my layer by layer. I'll probably cut this out of the segment and make it a standalone thing. Um, but yeah, if anybody has any questions about it, let me know. And um, I'll touch up on it. Super cool.